And what is going on guys? Okay, this time we're going to be making this thing. This is a homemade mechanical air raid siren. Mainly uses 3D printed parts and a stupidly overpowered motor, so let's get started. So I designed my siren to sound just like the one I'm filming right here. Now, I'm not too sure what model this one is, but uh, here in France, the sound these civil defense sirens make is more or less standardized, so they all sound pretty much the same. And if I wanted to test mine outside, I had to respect the standardized note, which is G4. As always, first step is design. Here's what I came up with in SolidWorks. The parts in red are 3D printed. I'll explain how everything works in just a second. Of course, all the SolidWorks files, STL files, and dimensioned plans are available on my website if you want to print one of these yourself. Next, I needed to choose a motor. So the motor I'm using here is a 1.1 kilowatt, two pole, single phase induction motor. This is completely overkill as the mechanical load will never allow it to push out 1.1 kilowatt. Not even close. In reality, I purchased this motor for another project that did need this much power, and so I decided I'll temporarily use it to drive the siren. We'll measure the power consumption later in the video, and choose a definitive motor accordingly. This motor spins at 2850 rotations per minute on 50 Hz. That's just under 48 rotations a second, which makes sense given that this is an induction motor and not a synchronous motor. If you want to build your own siren, I would definitely recommend an induction motor, as these are fairly cheap and will only go up to a certain speed. That is, of course, for a given input frequency. Universal motors you might find in a mitre saw go up to stupid speeds, and that would definitely cause issues, such as the rotor exploding. Bench grinders, however, use induction motors, so you could definitely use one of those to drive the siren if it's powerful enough. You definitely want your rotor to spin at around 3,000 rotations per minute. A 4 or a 6 pole motor will run much slower and the siren won't get loud at all. So let's start out with cutting the mounting discs out of 16mm MDF panels. To get the center holes cut out, I used a router. These will hold the stator parts in place, but I'll get back to that in just a second. Next, let's print all the parts we need. I printed everything in PLA at 0.3mm layer height. 0.2mm would have been better, but I'm impatient and I wanted to print it as quickly as possible. By the way, these Chinese printers are actually way more affordable than most people think. Uh, this model cost around 280 US dollars, shipping included. Uh, I've had it for years, and with the right settings, it prints flawlessly every single time. So I think they've discontinued this particular model, but I linked a similar printer in the description if some of you are interested in purchasing one. And here's the rotor. I decided to use forward-facing impellers for higher air displacement at lower pressure than backwards-facing or straight impellers. Now the first thing you'll notice is that when the rotor is spun on the motor, the edge isn't perfectly parallel to the motor shaft. There's probably a good millimeter of displacement there. So using some sandpaper glued onto a flat piece of wood, I sanded down the edge to make it nice and evenly smooth. As you can see, I sanded off quite a bit of plastic. After drilling a few holes in the mounting discs, I screwed on the motor using four M6 bolts. Alright, now let's talk about how this thing actually works. So, in my first video, I explained how these things make sound, so check the description if you're interested in understanding that. The important thing to know is that these doors cause the air to be pushed through the holes in pulses. So in this position, the air is blocked, and in this position, the air flows through. F the air flows through. Th the air flows through freely. Whoa, that's a tongue twister. And in this position, the air flows through freely. The closer I can get the rotor to the stator, the louder the sound will be. Now, if I were to print out a fixed stator, I'll run the risk of it being too small or too big due to printing tolerances, thermal expansion, and whatnot. The idea was to design a stator that could be manually adjusted so that I could get it to be precisely the right diameter. To do that, I have 8 separate stator blocks and 8 spacers. The stator blocks have 2 slotted holes which allow them to slide back and forth radially. The spacers guide the stator blocks, but also force air to go through the stator blocks. And that's pretty much it! After drilling some holes, I could bolt down the stator blocks to the mounting discs, getting them as close as possible to the motor, making sure of course that they never actually come into contact with each other. Next, I could bolt down the spacers. 
here I'm using threaded rod. These will be used to clamp down the top disc. This disc just makes sure all the air is going through the stator blocks and helps hold everything in place. Here you can actually see how close the rotor really is to the stator. If I did it right, I should be able to hear a quiet rumble when I spin it by hand. So this means it is fairly efficient. In order to add some weight to the rotor, I used a grinding disc. This will give the rotor a nice wind down duration. I drilled a hole in the motor shaft and I used a few MH washers to center the disc. Now, spinning a heavy chunk of metal at over 3000 rotations a second is obviously dangerous, so I definitely wouldn't recommend you follow this step. And it was time for a quick growl test to make sure the rotor could spin freely. And as you can hear... Everything seems to work just fine. By the way, that clicking sound is coming from the centrifugal switch engaging and disengaging the auxiliary winding. To control the speed of the motor, I'm going to use a 4kW DC speed controller. Now, this is not the proper way to control the speed of an induction motor. A VFD would have been much better for that, but this is all I had on hand at the time. A simple yet very effective way to increase efficiency is to add a cone at the outputs of every stator block. A cone simply works by allowing the siren to push against the larger surface area, thereby increasing the mechanical load, making it louder. I used cheap sports training cones for this. I simply cut off the base and the top. I was originally going to glue them in place using epoxy resin, but because of how flexible this plastic is, it wouldn't really stick, so I ended up just bolting them down instead. Now I would have liked uh, to use those uh, huge traffic cones, but I just couldn't get my hands on eight of them. The final step was to add three small support legs so that it could stand on its own. And we're done! First off, let's test it indoors and measure its output volume. By the way, if you're wearing headphones, you might want to turn it down as this thing gets pretty loud. And that was almost 108 decibels. Uh, remember, that was twice as loud as the siren I filmed at the beginning of the video. Now, of course, I am indoors and, you know, standing right next to it. So let's fire it up outdoors and see what that sounds like. It's the first Wednesday of the month at noon, so you can hear the surrounding sirens being tested. Here, I'm standing about 50 yards from my siren. And yes, the neighbors absolutely adore me. I mean, after everything I put them through, I'm pretty sure they're used to it by now. And there you have it. So if you're interested in making one of these yourself, uh, head over to my website. I have all the SolidWorks files, SDL files, dimension plans, and everything you need to get going. So click the link in the description if you're interested in checking that out. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you guys next time.